Thanks for taking a few minutes to discuss one of my favorite topics, stories, and more specifically, the power that stories have to create engaging, memorable guest experiences. I've had the good fortune to be in the attractions business for about 20 years, and a lot, over that time, I've heard a lot of talk about the use of stories and visitor experiences. However, I have to admit, a lot of the time, I really didn't know what the word story meant as it applied to visitor experiences. Some of you still may feel that way, but hopefully in about 10 minutes, you won't feel that way anymore. To understand how stories can be translated into visitor experiences, you must first understand the basic components of a story. The simplest way to think about story components is to think about the components, the components of a great book. It has a bevy of memorable characters, a series of environments, and an interesting narrative that has a beginning, middle, and an end. And stories can have great power over an audience. For example, stories can make you care about characters. As a quick test, if you had your choice, would you want to have a beer with this archaeologist or this one? I would say that most of you would choose the fictional Dr. Jones because we know his story. But what if I were to tell you that Professor Howard Carter actually uncovered King Tut's tomb? You'd probably want to hear that story also. Stories also make us care about content such as artifacts and museums. For example, you probably wouldn't look at this chair for more than two seconds if you saw it in a museum. But when you hear the story that was the chair that Abraham Lincoln sat upon when he was assassinated, that story makes the chair much more interesting. And that's our job as attraction designers, to engage audiences by telling that story in a memorable manner. So how exactly do we do that? Well, luckily we have a number of mediums at our disposal in which we can tell stories, including themed architecture, environmental graphics, displays, immersive environments, media experiences, rides, and shows. But do these tools really work to create memorable guest experiences? Well, let's see. Let's take a look at two rides that are pretty much identical except for a layer of story and theming. For our non-story based attraction, a generic drop tower. Pretty simple concept, you go up and down and sometimes up and down again. No characters, no environments, no stories, just thrill, just amusement. Fun for those 45 seconds or so, but not really memorable beyond that. Now let's take that same ride component and overlay engaging environments, characters, a strong storyline and a bit of intellectual property and you get one of my favorite attractions of all time, Tower of Terror. The story begins with its haunting architecture and carries on as you walk through the creepy lobby and into the library where we hear the story of those who perished on that doomed elevator. We then make our way to the boiler room and take an elevator where we see the ghosts of those who passed away. All of this builds up before the highlight of the ride, the actual tower drop. This attraction points out one of the key factors in telling a good story within a contraction, in that by taking guests through several environments and pre-shows, the story was able to slowly unfold, providing guests with the opportunity to forge an emotional connection to the characters and the underlying narrative. You have to provide space and time for stories to evolve and connect with your audience. So again, the base ride in both of these attractions is still the same, but I would propose that the guest experience within Tower of Terror is much richer and more memorable because of story. As most of you are probably aware, intellectual property is very much in demand these days. And when you base an attraction on an existing IP, your audience has already been exposed to and become emotionally attached to your characters, environments, and stories, which makes it easier to immerse them. But do you have to have IP to create a memorable guest experience? I would say that while it's certainly nice to have IP to work with, it's not a necessity. Let's again take a look at two identical rides, one with IP and one without, to see if the use of intellectual property provides a markedly better visitor experience. Based upon the popular Pixar movie, Ratatouille Adventure opened in Disneyland Paris this past July. During the attraction, guests ride on a trackless vehicle and see all the movie's characters as they ride through the Parisian kitchen featured in the movie and try to evade the evil chef skipper. So that's a quick look at a ride that successfully integrates intellectual property and story. 
Mystic Manor at Hong Kong Disneyland provides a very similar guest experience, except this attraction is based upon a new story developed specifically for the ride. The story begins with the architecture of Mystic Manor, home of Lord Henry Mystic and his monkey Albert. In an immersive pre-show, Lord Mystic explains that the house is filled with exhibition rooms and his latest collections. He also mentions an enchanted music box full of rare magic that must be opened with caution. Guests then begin touring the manor, and of course, the monkey Albert opens the box and brings everything inside the house to life. So while this attraction isn't based upon an existing IP, I would say that it's every bit as engaging as the Ratatouille ride, given its use of likable characters, magical environments, and an exciting storyline. The best story-based attractions are those that engage all of your senses and make you feel as though you're part of the narrative, living it in real life. My last case study is probably the best recent example of this approach in action, Universal's Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Since 1997, a variety of memorable characters, magical environments, and exciting stories have been described in great detail within seven books and brought to life in eight movies. So audiences have had over 17 years to fall in love with these components, which Universal had to bring to life. And they've done so by using all the techniques we discussed today. Themed architecture, immersive environments, interactive media, rides, and shows. Through these techniques, you live the story. You walk through Diagon Alley. You choose your wand at Ollivanders. Run through a brick wall to get to platform nine and three quarters. Ride the Hogwarts Express. You can uh, eat at the Leaky Cauldron. Drink a butter beer in, in Hogsmeade, or buy a chocolate frog at Honeydukes. You can uh, explore the various environments and unleash the magic of your wand, and see a variety of shows. All before you return to Hogwarts to outmaneuver a dragon, or revisit Diagon Alley to escape from Gringotts with Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Why is this such a great experience? Because it uses a variety of mediums and techniques to completely immerse guests within a story that once only existed on paper. Which brings us to our final chapter. In summary, a good story is comprised of interesting characters, environments, and narratives. Stories have the power to make an audience care about characters and content. To engage your audience in a story-based attraction, you must provide enough time and space for the story to evolve and your guests to care. Intellectual properties certainly is nice to have on creating an attraction, but not required. Guests will remember a good story more than a weakly interpreted IP. The best attractions completely immerse guests in a story, engaging all of their senses and making them feel as though they're part of the narrative. Most importantly, stories have the ability to suspend reality for a moment in time and capture our guests' hearts and minds. And that's an amazing power.